Hello, welcome back. So, we are discussing about movement of solids in fluids. We have discussed so far about the, uh, the how do we calculate the pre-setting velocity of spherical particles of different Reynolds number region into a stagnant fluid. And we have also discussed about the complexities associated with the uh, say in predicting the free settling velocities of non spherical particles into a stagnant fluid medium and what are the equations available and what are the limitations of all those equations. Now, in today's lecture, I will try to discuss about the it is known as hindered settling of spherical particles. Hindered means normally in a Mendel processing operation I have mentioned it quite a few times that we deal with large volume of particles. So, when you have a, a, a very large amount of particle coming into fluid medium and there how the individual particles they uh, uh, try to get settled into that fluid medium because it has to overcome some other forces than what are the forces we have discussed for a free settling condition because free settling condition uh, you have got the op uh, uh, forces acting in the opposite direction of the particle movement that is your drag force and buoyancy force. But in the hindered settling conditions we have got some other additional forces which are known as that is hindrance, hindrance means there is a resistance that means the hindered settling velocity that is when the particles are crowded then the settling velocity of individual particle class into the fluid medium uh, will be decreased than the free settling condition. So, that means in essence what we try to do that is we want to incorporate a correction factor for the particle crowding effect into the free setting velocity of the particles. So, what is the hindrance is because of that is a decrease in the available cross section for the upward flow of the fluid which results in an increased fluid uh, a, and an increased fluid approach velocity. So, it is a basically a decrease in the available cross section for the upward flow of the fluid which results in an uh, uh, a decreased fluid approach velocity it should be your uh, your uh, no sorry it should be increased fluid approach velocity. Now, what does it mean? It means that that is when you have your say suppose if you I have a 100 liter of water into a column of fluid and if I pour 100 kg of a material having wide size distribution starting from your uh, 1 millimeter down to 1 micrometer. Then if I want to calculate the settling velocity of 10 micrometer particle in that then what will happen the particle the fluid approach velocity in the upward direction will be a net result of the total displaced fluid velocity based on the total volume of the particle you have fed that is because of the 100 kg of the particle. It is not that single particle how much it has displaced. So, that means the fluid will have more approach velocity in the upward direction because of the displaced fluid than the particle downward velocity. Then number 2 is an increase in the apparent viscosity of the pulp what is the definition of pulp? Pulp is a solid liquid mixture. So, now what will happen if I have large number of particles of huge concentration. So, the viscosity of the fluid is no longer dependent on the fluids individual viscosity even the viscosity nothing but the resistance to flow even the fine particles which are in suspension the that will also increase the apparent viscosity of the pulp. So, the particle has to displace that viscous fluid not the original fluid. Then a decrease in the gravitational driving force 
due to a decrease in the difference in apparent specific gravity between the particles and the pulp. Because you remember that your original equation it is shown that it is rho f minus uh, your rho p minus rho f. So, rho p minus rho f as it is uh, becomes uh, larger then the more the value of the downward settling velocity of the particles. But when the rho p that is the particle density and the minus fluid density that when the fluid density because the fluid density is now the suspension density is no longer the original fluid density. So, because the fluid density has increased so the difference between rho p minus rho f will be less. So, naturally your your the velocity of the particle in the downward direction will be lesser. An increase in the wall hindrance that means, it is a wall effect it is the surrounding wall also will try to uh, have some effect on to the settling velocity of the particle. Now, this is a little bit of complicated your subject, but you will try to understand this if I give this example that is your hindered setting velocity like is like having a similarity like when you are driving a vehicle into a, uh, a crowded traffic condition. So, what happens even though you are not hitting the your uh, another vehicle which is in front of you or maybe in the side, but your speed of your vehicle has to be reduced significantly. Otherwise, you may hit the particle you may hit the vehicle uh, 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 which is ahead of you or maybe you, you can hit the particle you hit the vehicle which is beside you. So, automatically your your speed decreases reduces. So, you can drive the vehicle at a speed of say suppose your 100 kilometer per hour when you have less traffic density. Same road same uh, vehicle same driver you have to reduce it the your speed if you see that there is a traffic as the traffic congestion increases. You may reach a certain point that when it, it, you may reach a standstill condition that is called the traffic jam or something like that. But here it is a similar conditions only exception is that there if you hit another vehicle that is called an accident, but here even the particle particle collisions will be there. So, uh, and then uh, so although it is not mentioned here, so the particle particle collision also can come into this. So, there are so many factors that is which influences uh, uh, in the in a uh, in a in a different way that is it reduces your free settling velocity of the particles when the crowding of the particle becomes uh, higher and higher. So, how do I calculate that into a hindered settling condition what will be the settling velocity of my particles. That means, what would be my correction factor for the particle crowding on the your uh, say free setting velocity of my particles. This is a very popular model used frequently by the chemical engineers that is called now V T H H stands for hindered settling, hindered T stands for terminal. So, hindered terminal settling velocity for the spherical particle that is proposed by Richardson and Jackie that is your V T is a your free terminal setting velocity and the correction factor is 1 minus capital C to the power n. So, what is the C? C is the volumetric concentration of your particle, because you do not have to consider the what is the mass percent concentration, because the fluid is getting displaced based on the your what is the volumetric concentration of your solid particles. So, you have to consider the volumetric concentration of your total particle and n, n is a constant and then what would be the value for n that is different researchers they have given different values for n, but these two gentlemen Maud and Whitmore they propose that n is greater than is equal to 2.33 and less than equal to 4.65, but for your calculation for your system 
what would be the value of n it is very you have to uh, do the test and you have to find out that so here in mineral processing literature for application in mineral processing the richardson and jackie model this gentleman holland back he proposed an equation uh, for n while uh, in relation to re and yes this is an empirical equation but it works well for mineral system in many instances so this is the equation proposed by holland back where you don't have to worry about what is the value of your uh, n because if you know the re and how do you know the re because if you go for iterative technique and you can get to know the what is the Reynolds number of your particle and then based on that you can get the value of n you know the volumetric concentration of your solids and you have already calculated the terminal setting velocity of your particle based on the uh, equations we have proposed if it is stokesian you can use the stokesian condition or i would suggest again that you better go for this iterative technique so based on that you can get the value of hindered terminal setting velocity of the particle but there is a caution before using this equation what is that caution that this model is applicable only for uniform density and mono dispersed suspension that means when the particle density and the particle size they are fixed that they are identical that is suppose i have got a particle size within 100 micrometer average size mean size of 100 micrometers and the density is fixed that means you don't have any other different density classes so then if you are crowding it that means if you increase the relative volumetric concentration of these particles so you get the value of your uh, say you can use safely this equation so what it is saying that you if after beyond a certain particle concentration this value will be zero that means when the uh, your uh, entire fluid has become totally viscous then there won't be any movement of the particles so again i repeat with caution you should use this equation that is it is applicable only for uniform density and mono dispersed suspension but in mineral processing field we hardly encounter this situation because the mined materials they neither have uniform density or not they are mono dispersed that means you have got a size distribution you have got a density distribution so in that case even we assume that they are spherical particles what equation we should use what i propose this is a uh, this is a again a model proposed by uh, uh, say uh, professor conscious group that is lee's model and there is an extension of concha and almendras model initial model what we have discussed so this is an empirical model again it looks little bit complicated but if you look at it closely it is not that difficult to uh, uh, calculate based on this so there are two functions f1 c that is they are all function of concentration f2 c they are all function of concentration and here the only change you are not considering the row fluid you are taking the row pulp so and this is the absolute value of that and if you use this equation you use the pulp density and uh, in place of this and you use this function that is you know the volumetric concentration of solids then it is not saying that if i have a size distribution and density distribution how do i use it but this is taking also the total solid concentration so then the vth is uh, you can calculate based on that equation now again this has got a limitation uh, because it does not take into consideration of the uh, particle density distribution uh, as it is evident from this and the size distribution another thing what i try to highlight here as i said that that when i have say suppose i am coming back to that uh, previous example that is i have got 100 kg of material i have poured into a liquid column of uh, your 100 liter volume so what will happen i have particle classes from your 1 millimeter down to 1 micrometer size now 
when I am pouring this 100 kg material, so the displaced fluid will have some upward velocity. Now, imagine I have got a 5 micrometer particle or particles below 5 micrometers, their downward velocity that mg may be much less than the upward velocity of the fluid. So, in that case, those particles may not even settle at all. So, that is called the counter flow factor, that is whether we have considered the upward uh, increased upward velocity of the fluid. So, that is why in many cases you will find that the uh, in a wide size distribution of particle, some particles they never settle into that fluid. And when I was uh, uh, looking at the literature, I found that there is a uh, uh, your literature written in, in a German language that is called Bauer and Thiele's model, which considers these two that is it's written that um, for a ith class particle that is when you have an assemblage of different particle classes varying in size and density. So, as a hindered terminal settling velocity of the ith class particle in that assemblage is equal to k i c it is called the counter flow factor of the ith class uh, particle what it is experiencing and this a stands for swarm that is your swarm velocity of the ith class particle in that uh, mixture and i t is the terminal setting velocity of this particle. So, this is bit complicated do not have to worry about it just remember the reference of this when you really require uh, to apply an adequate model you can try this model. So, <coughs> this is known as Brouwer and Thiele's model. What I try to highlight here that again if I uh, compare with some synthetic particles that is with uh, quartz particles having various sizes and having a very low concentration that is 6.89 percent by volume. And if we compare the predicted values proposed uh, uh, your uh, so predicted values based on these three different models what we had discussed that is Richardson Jackie Lee's model that is your extension of Conchan Almendras model and Brouwer and Thiele's model. You see that all three your predicted values they are entirely different. So, again the question comes which one I should use. Again my personal suggestion would be that uh, we may use the Brouwer and Thiele's model because fundamentally it looks much better than the other two models. The difficulty in this type of your hindered setting model development, hindered velocity, your model development for hindered setting velocities in a, uh, a large concentration of particles, the problem is with the measurement. That is, how do I measure the individual particle settling velocities in that condition? And uh, it is a very difficult domain, and many people uh, are doing are active are active in this research field, but as far as I am concerned, this is the scenario as of today. There may be some better models uh, published in other journals, but what I have uh, seen that this Brouwer and Thiele's model works well for uh, our mineral processing systems. This model, this comparison, if we extend it at a much higher concentration, we will find that that is at 30.47 percent concentration, we find that only the Brouwer and Thiele's model is predicting that some particles that is at this size range they have got zero settling velocity that means they are not settling at all and this is what we commonly observe in uh, our mineral processing field uh, in a dewatering system we call it thickness that is where we try to dewater our that is we try to get rid of our water so that we can recycle it back and we want to have a solid liquid separation, we find that the ultra fine particles they never settled. Does not matter how much of your chemicals that is we call it flocculants you are adding to that, because what happens when you add more flocculant the bigger particle becomes much more bigger and the smaller particles although they become bigger, but their your uh, ratio of their sizes remains the same. Uh, that is the largest to smallest sizes. So, I think 
I personally uh, believe that it is because of the counter flow factor, the uh, your displaced fluid they have provided to these finer particles. So, what is my suggestion in that case that you do it in stages, do not try to do it in one go, you may uh, uh, send this particles along with the water into a next thickener and there you may try. So, what we can conclude based on that, these are typically my personal opinion that Richardson and Jackie model may be used for uniform density and mono dispersed suspension. For polydense and polydispersed suspension, Bar and Thiele's model seems realistic. However, the model has to be validated well with reliable data set. Nobody has validated it because of the intrinsic difficulty in measuring the hindered settling velocities in a crowding in a crowded condition. So, reliable hindered settling model is yet to be developed for practical use. So, this is a strong message that when you are designing your uh, mineral processing equipment or you are trying to fine tune it, be careful that what settling velocity model you have used and what are the limitations of those models and how much of error you can induce into your entire simulation package or in the your optimization package, because that you must be very careful. So, what are the issues that inadequate measures of shape, size and orientation, we do not know of the very fundamental questions, irregular shapes, how do uh, is size the appropriate is the your sphericity is the appropriate criteria, may be may not be, then viscoplastic and viscoelastic liquids, what will happen in that case. So, these are wall effects, how do I quantify it? Uh, settling under dynamic conditions that is when fluid is also moving, then your hindered settling conditions. Now, in many instances in our mineral processing system or mineral processing operations, what do we try to do while dealing with very fine particle sizes, where uh, it is almost impossible to separate particles at that size, because mostly we try to separate the particles in a fluid medium based on the principle of relative settling velocity. That means, if I drop two particles into a fluid medium after a delta t time, they should have a your uh, uh, say different distance traveled. So, based on the differences in the traveling distance, mechanically if we assume that there is some separator, you can separate the your finer particle from coarser particle or maybe lighter particle from your, your heavier particles. So, in that case, Suppose, imagine that we want to separate uh, two particles based on their density at a size of 40 micrometers. Now, what will happen there? Uh, your differences in the settling velocity may be very less. So, in that case, can we not increase their settling velocities by some other means? Yes, we can do it. How we can do it? Now, if we can incorporate a centrifugal force on that. So, what will happen? when we incorporate a centrifugal force. So, that is called that is defined as G force, we uh, popularly known as capital G, capital G force, which is nothing but a basically your in terms of your uh, uh, say calculation force calculations, it can be written as omega square r by G, if the fluid is basically you are rotating it. But actually G has got a similarity with that, that how many times of the gravitational uh, acceleration you have uh, enhanced. Is it 100 G means 100 times of the your acceleration due to gravity. So, you have increased that. Now, what will happen? Uh, that is your particle setting velocity in an incompressible fluid in a centrifugal force field may be written like this. Again, this is a difficult domain, but just for your information sake that we can write that again it is related to your Reynolds number range that is what size range of particle you are discuss, you are uh, dealing with. That is when the Reynolds number is greater than 10 to the power minus 4, because uh, if you go beyond that you may be reaching a Brownian uh, motion. So, uh, there is a uh, your different behavior of the particle. So, there the body forces are not at all dominant, uh, it is the basically the surface forces which are dominant. 
and Reynolds number less than 0.2 that means in between 0.2 to 10 to the power minus 4 uh, we can write v that is your, your setting velocity in a centrifugal force field is g that is how many times that centrifugal force field you have applied multiplied by what is the gravitation what is the settling velocity of that particle into a normal gravitational force field that means what is the free setting velocity of that particle multiplied by how many times the gravitational force field you have increased and if it is in a crowded condition you can replace it with a, a your a say hindered settling velocity and multiplied by that capital G how many times you have this equation uh, uh, is will be different when the Reynolds number is in between 500 to 0.2 it becomes square root of G into V G and when it is more than that beyond 500 it becomes cube root of uh, G into V G that means it does not increase your proportionately with the increase in your centrifugal uh, force or the intensity of your centrifugal force. Anyway, these are all required for your uh, fine tuning your processes. Now, the question comes that is as a minder processor, why should I be worried about all these models and complexity of the problem? I will try to show you with a simple example that is if I am uh, uh, if I am uh, very clear about the models or if I am familiar with the models, then we can solve certain problems, even we can better design our equipment. Now, this is the example I am given that is suppose if you have a coal and mineral mixture and this coal suppose this coal particle density is 1.3 gram per centimeter cube and its size is 0 0.6 centimeter. Okay. So, you have got a bigger size and this density and you have got a mineral particle whose density is 2.3 gram per centimeter cube and size is 0 0.2 centimeter. Now, I if I ask you that I have a mixture of this and I want to have a system like this that is it will be fed at the middle of a liquid column and where the uh, liquid will be uh, uh, liquid will be uh, say sent through the bottom in the upward direction. That means, what should be the rising velocity of my fluid in the upward direction to have a separation in between coal and mineral. That means, why I should have upward velocity of this? Because this upward velocity of water should be able to uh, take out my coal particle from this mixture and the, uh, your mineral particles should be collected at the bottom separately. So, that is what I want to design that is I have to fix that what should be the rising velocity of my water. So, that means the rising velocity of my water should be in between the settling velocity of these two particles. That means, if my coal particles are having a is having a, a velocity say suppose uh, your 1 millimeter per second and my mineral particle is having a settling velocity of 2 millimeter per second. So, any velocity in between 1 to 2 millimeter per second of this fluid who should be able to take out my coal particle from this mixture. So, that means, I can have a separation of coal and mineral by this simple principle. So, to do that what I have to do? I have to first calculate the free settling velocities of these two particles based on their size and density. So, we have done that and we have found that the terminal settling velocity of coal particle is 23.6 centimeter per second and its Reynolds number is 1585 and your mineral particle terminal setting velocity is 25.2 centimeter per second and its Reynolds number is 565. Okay. Now, in this case you see that 
the difference between the setting velocity is only 1.6 centimeter per second. So, that means, my water should have a rising velocity more than 23.6 centimeter per second, but below 25.2 centimeter per second. Theoretically, it may be possible, but practically it may not be that possible that to precisely maintain my upward water velocity within that range. So, I need a wider range of my, I need to have more flexibility of my rising water velocity to have a better separation. So, now let us see that if I uh, use a hindered setting condition, that means we are not talking about two particles, we are having many particles, we are having a crowded condition. And if we use a least model, if you remember the least model, so if we use the least model and we keep on increasing the percentage volume concentration of the solids having equal proportion, that is your 50 50 mixture of coal and mineral particles, and we increase the volumetric concentration of the total particle class in that medium. If we if it has got 2 percent by volume then the naturally your setting velocity of your coal and mineral particle will be less. So, your coal particle now setting velocity becomes 21 centimeter per second, whereas your mineral particle uh, your mineral particle setting velocity is 25.6 centimeter per second, uh, there is a difference it should be ideally less than that, but that is the error what is being induced based on these differences in the least model and the model you have used for free setting velocities. Anyway, so and the pulp density will be 1019 kg per meter cube. If you increase it to 10 percent by volume, you see the difference becomes 15 and 21.2. If you keep on increasing that up to 30 percent by volume, you see that difference is significant 2.35 and 15. So, does not matter how accurate these numbers are. So, now if you use a perfect model, the difference here is around 12.65, but that may come down to maybe 11. Okay. So, in this case, this demonstration do not worry about the accuracy of the predicted values, but what I try to show that how much you can go that is your particle your coal particle density was 1.3 that means, it is 1300 kg per meter cube. So, if you have more density than this, so that is 1300 kg per meter cube. So, the mineral particle the coal particle will not will be only floating. So, that is a different separation that is called a density separation you do not need even upward velocity of the fluid in that condition your coal particle will simply float and the mineral particle will settle. So, that is a different technique, but in that case the viscosity of the fluid will increase and you have a different problem. But you see that here when we have more flexibility with the based on the differences in the setting velocities, we can have a better design uh, of my equipment. So, what I try to show here that is uh, even with the particle crowded condition that is your hindered setting condition the separation between the two particles it not always uh, 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 so becomes difficult it may be easier also in certain conditions. But what is the essence of this discussion that if we know how to calculate the settling velocity of the particles and if we know that what are the errors we can have based on those models. So, when you are not sure about the errors you can have a your uh, as a wide variation in their uh, wide you can choose a condition where you have got more flexibility in your setting velocity differences. So, that is my final advice. So, based on that even if we know the setting velocity of the uh, particles we can have your as a, we can design we can think of a design of a classifier that is a size separation device as a like this that is we can have it uh, your size separation. Suppose, if I have the three different your, uh, your separate vessels with a partitioning in between and if we have a slurry 
and we let them you know, fall freely onto this. So, what will happen? The coarsest particle will settle faster and if we know the setting velocity and if we know the flow path of this. So, we can calculate the trajectories of that, that particle and we can separate this coarse particle here, intermediate particles here and fine particles here. So, the first thing I should know uh, what is the setting velocity of that, then we have to uh, take into consideration the different features of my flow and then we can have a fluid out here. So, we can have easily a classifier to be designed or maybe the existing classifier size separation devices, you can modify them a, a based on this knowledge gained that is on uh, setting velocity models. Similarly, we can design, we can think of a settling chamber based on your solid liquid separations or maybe we can have coarse solids, intermediate solids and fine solids, you can have rising water here and you know that uh, what should be the rising water velocity and you can have this type of design. So, this is how the Minder processing systems or Minder new equipment you can design or maybe you can optimize the process parameters or the design uh, variables of your Minder processing equipment for uh, performance improvement in your plant or maybe the, the students who will be joining in near future the mineral processing industry, they can contribute immensely by uh, say having updated knowledge in this area of solid fluid interactions. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll, uh, so, this is another example that is uh, what is the particle size versus velocity relationship uh, for a thickening that is your dewatering purposes this is what we have already discussed. So, there are many examples what we can give and when we discuss about different mineral processing equipment, I will show you how your basic knowledge of the setting velocity of the particles will help you in better understanding the separation mechanism of particles in different mineral processing equipment. Thank you very much.